All right, what's up, my loves? Let me introduce myself. I'm sorry. My name is Makita, and you can call me Kita. A lot of people call me Kita. Um, I have a personal training business called Tight Grip Fitness, where you can get your grip and keep it tight. All right, we do full body fitness therapy in our virtual sessions. I do host that three days out of the week. Um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5.15 p.m. Central Standard Time. So if you are looking for an at-home opportunity for you to either begin your fitness journey or maintain or um, just elevate, then, you know, you can always contact me for that. Um, we'll get into that later on throughout the weeks. This is um, supposed to be a six-week program. So those of you guys who are familiar with me, um, if I post this on YouTube, I'm not sure what platform this will be posted to, given that this is the first attempt to uh, visually record this podcast. And I am also recording an audio for this podcast. And as you can see, it's very minimal setup. And this is a situation in which we are working with what we have. So I'm very excited, actually. This idea of recording this podcast came about from a dear friend who took that leap and quit her nine to five and started her very own healing company. I've always known this woman to be a, a gentle, kind soul. I tend to navigate towards women with a very strong motherly sense about themselves who have um, like a softer nature in the way they speak, in the way they conduct themselves. And so I was actually very thrilled to hear her call me. It had been some time since I've spoken to her and I really haven't seen her since our high school graduation. However, uh, we do keep up with each other on social media. And so it was wonderful to hear from her and to hear about her new entrepreneurial endeavors. And so that brings me to my point of um, what we're doing here today. This podcast, I am calling Living Fit Daily. And um, I thought that that would be a wonderful name for the podcast, considering that we don't want to create this idea that health, fitness, and wellness is a temporary for the month, for my birthday, for this, for that kind of situation. This is a lifestyle change. It is about changing our behaviors and our patterns and really a lot of unlearning and relearning how to take better care of ourselves. Uh, the good friend that I was speaking of earlier, her name is Alma Ruth Condell, and um, we call her Coach Alma. She just launched a new website. You can look her up or look up the website coachalmac.com, and the name of her website is Source Healing. So this podcast is brought to you by Source Healing. It's a collaborative effort of Tight Grip Fitness and Source Healing called Living Fit Daily. And so just briefly touch on what Source Healing is about and her mission. It's the Garden of Eden of fulfilling programs that each offers healing of the mind, the body, and the spirit for men, women, people of the LBGTQ plus community, and children who have autism. Their goal is to help every individual who struggles with balancing and harmonizing their life so that way they can live a more fulfilling lifestyle and something that they're happy with overall. A little bit of my background, like I said, I became a certified personal trainer in the year of 2021. I believe I started working on my credentials in 2020. Prior to that, I had always been into fitness and healthy lifestyle. I grew up in Stockton, California, where I grew up with my grandmother, who sadly passed away of complications from diabetes back in 2011. 
this was shortly after I graduated high school and left. And so I, I came back to Houston and dedicated my life to becoming more healthy and figuring out ways to encourage my family and my friends to be more healthy, to prevent these very avoidable diseases and complications later on in life. So that is where tight grip fitness stems from. And the first thing that I want to get into with this podcast is about creating a healthier mindset. You will not meet a trainer or a health professional who will not tell you that it starts with your mind and your belief system. So this first episode is dedicated to that in which the first week's lesson I am calling a fit mindset. The objective of this week's lesson is to teach principles of self-motivation and discipline and adherence to these programs. I wanted to start off this program with a fit mindset and these lessons because once you get started in the action phase of your fitness journey, I don't want you to feel lost in the sauce and you're not well prepared for what is to come. So it's important to start anything that you do with a solid foundation. And this to me is what I consider building a solid foundation. And so I also would like to teach you guys how to approach fitness and nutrition from a positive mindset. That's what all of this is about in terms of changing behavioral patterns and things of that nature. So how to change your mindset and how it leads to a change in behavior. At the end of these podcasts, I will present to you homework for you guys to complete, for you to think about just some tools, some resources. And I also, along the way, will share stories in my experience because just like you, I had to start somewhere and ultimately I had to develop a mindset as well. Just FYI, not everything you can get from a book, not everything you can understand fully, thoroughly through um, just reading and watching. So it's going to be important that you follow through with the exercises and the homework that's provided to you. So the first thing that I want to talk about is rethinking what it means to be fit. Most people think in order to be fit, it requires extreme workouts or extreme training like an athlete, right? One of the reasons I want you to rethink what it means to be fit is because I run into many people and clients who tend to watch everyone else, look at everybody else. They have this idea set in place of what a fit person is and what they do. And that can stray somebody away from beginning their journey because they think that they have to know it all. They think they have to go into the gym and immediately be able to lift 100 pounds, 20 pounds, or whatever the case. But it is so okay for you to start small, train with lighter weights, train with bands or no weights at all. That's an important concept to wrap your head around. There are all different styles of training. There's yoga, there's Pilates, there's HIIT workouts, there's strength training, they have bodybuilding and things like that, sports training, all in which the essential movements in each of these styles of training may be similar or the same, but the level of intensity applied to each style of training will differ. So some of the benefits and stats and facts of training is that uh, regular physical activity reduces the risk of many adverse health issues and outcomes. So 
you have to realize that anywhere you start, whether it's just with brisk walking or a light jog or even just simply stretching your body for 5, 10, 15 minutes on a daily basis can and will prevent any adverse health issues in the future. You know that term, use it or lose it? That's what we're talking about here. You don't want to go through life only going to work, sitting down at work, coming home, sitting down at home. And then not only that, you're not being conscious of the things that you put in your body to refuel or to strengthen your body and your immune system at the same time. Okay, so in combination of poor eating habits and a lack of activity throughout the day can cause adverse health issues. So some physical activity is better than none, basically is what I'm saying. 50% of people who begin their fitness journey quit within a six-month time frame. So that brings my point from earlier that we don't want to create this habit of it's okay to get fit for this. I'm only getting fit for my birthday. I'm only eating vegetables during this time to go on vacation or whatever the case. You want to keep in mind that this is a lifestyle change. Okay? You should <laughs> you should be incorporating healthy fruits and vegetables into every meal every single day of your life. And had we not been conditioned to quick, cheap food um, and have been properly taught about our bodies and what it needs to survive and what it doesn't need, we wouldn't have to go through this process of unlearning and relearning. And I think that's one of the most unfortunate parts about today's fitness industry. There really would be no fitness industry if we weren't in such a regressive state of mind when it comes down to our overall health and well-being. But in most cases, the more physically active you are, the better results you'll have for long-term benefits, okay? Most health benefits occur with just 150 minutes per week. So you can break that down however you wish to. Um, you can divide 150 by 7 if you do plan on being active 7 days out the week. You can divide it by 3 if you want to go 3 days out the week. You can just break it up into 15 minutes a day, 15, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. And that will be more beneficial than doing absolutely nothing. These are things to consider when you're creating a fitness lifestyle for yourself, all right? Both cardio and strength are equally important and beneficial. So most times people beginning their fitness journey, they, they often ask, Does it, is it necessary to do cardio? Is it necessary for strength? You may even speak to some fitness professionals who feel like you don't need any cardio at all. Um, I'm not really one of those people. I do enjoy walking. I enjoy running. I enjoy cycling. I enjoy a nice hike up a hill and running upstairs and things of that nature. And not only that, but I enjoy activities. So if I could skateboard, play kickball, play baseball, basketball, volleyball, all of these things will contribute to cardio. And so with strength training, usually strength training contributes to your cardio. It improves your cardiovascular endurance and um, vice versa. So you want to go for a longer period of time being able to lift those weights, especially once you start progressing and getting into heavier weights. These things help with how much oxygen you're able to take in as you're doing the movements. And somewhere along the line, we'll get into like breath work and how important breath work is and how it actually connects to your overall well-being through spirituality and um, just 
fitness and health in general. All right. So <clears throat> there are benefits for all age groups and it's equally as beneficial to those who have disabilities as well. So as I mentioned, Source Healing hosts programs that are meant to balance men, women, and those of different sectors of our community. And so I, I like to make a point that, that the essential movements in fitness are the same for everybody. And when you think of essential movements, you think of movements that we naturally do on a daily basis. So we're picking up our children that may require a squat and a lift. Um, we're doing our laundry that will require a hinge, which would be similar to a deadlift. So we do all of these movements and in the fitness world, there's a way to properly do them with techniques so you don't throw out your back, so you don't pull muscles, so you're not hurting while you're doing it. And strength training and exercise alone helps with these daily movements. And so I get that we live in a world where especially with everybody seeking out these entrepreneurial endeavors who have to niche down and it makes it seem like fitness is specific for a certain group of people. So, oh, I work with pre and postnatal women to get fit. Those with disabilities, autism, cerebral palsy, or whatever the case. Um, essentially, when it comes down to it, the movements are the same. The movements are the same, the intensity varies, and it's gonna vary from person to person. And we're gonna have to refuel differently from person to person. Um, you may have to modify or regress some of the movements, but essentially, the movements are the same. So. I hope that in this process of learning and relearning how to develop a fit mindset that you don't get pulled into the hype of, oh, I can't work with this person or I can't go over here or over there because this is meant for pregnant people. This is meant for that. If the goal is to be fit, to move, to breathe, to live, all of these movements will help you do that in any form of training, whether it's yoga, Pilates, HIIT workouts, strength workouts with free weights, machines, these will all be beneficial to you, okay? So another point that I'd like to bring up is food for fuel. So in most cases, you will hear especially with me being a trainer, in most cases I hear, and from my personal experience, that adding the element of nutrition is the hardest part. If you hear that 80-20 rule, it's 80% nutrition, 20% physical activity. And so, or some people consider it like 80-20 rule with nutrition, where 80% of your nutrition is nice and clean, and then 20% you have some wiggle room for the things that you want to indulge in, right? However, when we begin our fitness journey, we want to consider and reshape our idea in our relationships with food. And so the first thing you're going to learn is that food is fuel. The reason we consume food is so that way we can restore our bodies, so we can heal our bodies, so we can continue to move our bodies at efficient levels, okay? So why do we eat? Why do we hydrate? Because of these things listed, all right? Hydration can come in different forms of drinking water. It can come in eating water-filled fruit. You want you want to start incorporating fresh vegetables and fruits into your nutrition. And as you can tell, I do my best to not refer to food and the way we eat as diets. 
Um, they tend to come with a negative connotation of fad dieting or quick fixes. And if we're thinking of this as a lifestyle change, then we have to think of it in long-term effects. And so when I refer to food, I try my best to refer to it as your nutrition. Are you eating nutrient dense foods? That means leafy greens, like the dark green stuff, um, things with color, with crunch, with texture, or are you eating things that are high in fat that have, um, that will break down in your body as sugars? And you want to learn generally how these foods are processed once they're consumed. You don't have to be a super expert or whatever the case, but you do want to have some sense or idea of what these foods are. And typically you would find trainers and those who have a little background in the health and fitness world refer to macronutrients and micronutrients, macronutrients being like your main source of energy, your carbs, your proteins, your healthy fats, and things like that. And then micronutrients being the vitamins and minerals that you receive from the things that you consume. All right. So we started off as hunters and gatherers. And that was my point of saying that there would be no fitness industry if we were still living in that state of hunting and gathering because we had to physically get out there, climb trees, use our bodies, gaining strength naturally by having to work for our food. Nowadays, we work for money and that can be as simple as sitting here talking to a camera, not moving my body at all. So with that lifestyle that we most of us live now, we have to put the time aside to get that movement in so that way we're not gaining unnecessary weight, we're not developing blood clot, we're not just sitting stagnant, okay? So second point, I want to talk to you guys about self-motivation and self-efficacy. As a trainer, it is my job to not only get people motivated, but to start an exercise program um, that you can follow, that you feel confident about following, whether I'm in the picture or not. Um, it's one thing to motivate people to start, and it's another thing to get them to adhere to a program. And so you can spend all the money in the world. You can watch all the YouTube videos, watch all the TV shows, post all the poster pictures of your favorite influencer, celebrity, or whatever who looks a certain type of way and say, I want that, but will you go do the work to do that? And a lot of times people can be handed exactly what is needed to get the job done and they will not do it. And you have to ask yourself, well, well, why? What are the motivating factors for you to either get something done or to not getting any, anything done? And with that comes different things like environment and feelings. And it can be a bunch of different things that can keep you from or drive you to your goals. It is my duty to maximize your experiences, but it's your responsibility to adhere to the program, stay focused, and be disciplined in the goals that you set for yourself. Now, I may be there to help you set these goals, and I may be there to encourage you and to cheer you on throughout your process, but it's ultimately up to you. And together, we'll set these realistic achievable goals. I will never I will never be that trainer who goes full blown boot camp style yelling at you and I think they do this more so for the theatrics of it on television when you watch those television shows like The Biggest Loser where the trainers come into the house and they're throwing away everybody's food and stuff like that. I want the experience to be something that you want for yourself, not something that I want more for you. 
I've even been told this in other sectors of my life with starting a business or um, maybe completing my education or something like that. Other people can't want it more for you than you want it for yourself, ultimately. So if I give you a list of things that you should be eating versus things that you shouldn't be eating and you go home and you see in your refrigerator in your cabinets that you have all of these things that are not on this list then it's up to you to get rid of them especially if you're living alone and you're by yourself and you know that you don't have to throw these things away that's the number one thing that i hear from prospective clients or clients once they receive the list of do's and don'ts is that they spent the money on it they don't want to waste it now there are ways around that where you can still have these things but you're not overindulging in them. You're being mindful of how much you're eating or intaking or whatever the case. But there's always ways around this. So I usually suggest for them to donate it, make it healthier. So if you got microwavable food or hot dogs or something like that, instead of eating those hot dogs with a bag of chips, you're gonna eat it with a salad. And then once all that food is gone, we start fresh because like I said this is a lifestyle change so motivation could come from any source but the important work such as um, starting and continuing starts with you the individual there's not one trainer who hasn't experienced this if you don't have a high level of self-efficacy on your own where you're like okay I'm about to start this program I'm gonna do exactly what she tells me to do not everybody's capable of doing that like temptation is a mug and just you know if you're an emotional eater sometimes your moods and emotions can sway and and make you say the heck with what she talking about today I'm about to do whatever I want to do it's gonna be the discipline that says I'm feeling this way I'm gonna stay on this I'm gonna find a way around this so if you got a severe sweet tooth instead of going to buy that cake or eating those donuts we're gonna make us some apple donuts or whatever like we're gonna put a little chocolate on it to get a little satisfaction out of it but the base of what we ate today was nutritious okay it had fiber in it it had minerals it had its vitamins it had color it had crunch it was fresh I can provide you motivation you can provide yourself motivation but only you can be disciplined okay now the discipline that comes with the trainer is I'm not I'm not canceling sessions on you I'm not not doing what I said I was going to do to help you and to encourage you understanding the power of changing behavior is important we can get so stuck into our patterns and saying this is just how i am it's not just how you are it's what you've learned and it's what you've accepted for yourself and the next thing that i want to point is attitude that's going to be another factor in shifting your mindset to a healthier fit mindset your attitude towards exercise is not the only motivating factor evaluate whether your motivations are intrinsic or extrinsic and intrinsic motivation usually stems from inside it makes you feel good to be fit like you're not out here worried about who's watching you and what you look like you can go to the park and do a run and you're going to do it because it makes you feel good you know that endorphins will be flowing you'll be a happier you you'll feel better you'll sleep better you'll be more motivated to eat something healthier once you've done your activity extrinsic motivation is usually stemmed from a have to do I have to do this because I have high blood pressure. I have to do this because I have diabetes. I have to do this because I'm noticing that my face is, is pimpled out. I got pimples on my chest and on my back and stuff like that. It must be a hormonal thing. I have to change my diet now, okay? And a lot of times we end up waiting until something extreme happens to us in order for us to make that change. This is my attempt for you to say, hold up, trust myself, 
I'm not feeling good. I'm not, I'm not feeling the way that I know that I should. And I'm going to make the change to feel good. And I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to embrace every step along the way. I'm going to embrace this process no matter if there's a little pain involved or not. No matter if I have to stop eating donuts for a while or not. You know? So intrinsically motivated people um, in terms of exercise comes from the inherent pleasure of the experience. You can enjoy the social engagement of it. You enjoy the challenge, um, the skill development associated with a positive attitude. And you have good feelings about what you're doing. Like I said, extrinsic motivation comes from other benefits like you have to lose weight. You've got to be more healthy. Um, a lot of times when you're operating from just an extrinsic point of view, you tend to fall off of your pattern or routine of your fitness lifestyle more often than somebody who's intrinsically motivated would. And that's because you don't really like doing what you're doing. You don't want to do it. You're only doing it to satisfy one sector of what it is. And and fitness not only contributes to, you know, your physical aesthetics, but it contributes to a healthier mind, a healthier heart, a healthier spirit. And you have to take these things into consideration when you are looking at your why most trainers when you go on their website you're going to uh, buy one of their programs it's gonna ask you what is your why why are you here what do you want with me you know so as a certified personal trainer it is my job to teach and not to control you so personally my training style is to teach a man how to fish I am not one who's like Oh yeah, let me feed you. Let me give it to you. No, when you train with me, I will let you know exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to show you all of these essential movements, the most basic forms and styles of exercise and training, stretching, cooling down, different exercise modifications. So you have no excuse. So um, if you're not paying attention, I can tell. Because we're going to, this is a repetitive thing. We watch the same commercials every single day that will motivate us to buy whatever it is that we're watching commercials about. We watch the same type of shows every day. I know people who can watch the same episodes of a show 50 times, me being one of them. We listen to the same songs until we learn the words of these songs. I know the words of commercials verbatim because I've seen them so many times. So it's the same thing with exercise. You like people are out there and they're like, no repeat movements. No, um, I don't like repeating the same routines. Well, baby, you got to repeat the same routines. Like, and you know, the beautiful thing about probability and statistics and stuff like that is that maybe from one routine, you can get like 50 different routines from it but essentially you're going to be doing the same movements you're doing the same patterns and keep that in mind like don't make the journey difficult if you don't have to so throughout the our journey if i were to train you depending on how we start if you start in a gym right you decided that i'm going to invest in a gym membership And I'm going to show you how to use every single piece of equipment in there, every single machine. I'm going to show you how to utilize every room in there so that let's say you come in on a day on a Monday (laughs) at 5, 6 p.m. And it's packed in there and you're like, dang, I really need to get this workout. But oh, oh, well, I don't have to because the floor is taken. No, I can show you how to do your routine in the smallest little corner of the gym possible. Or you can go outside, or if you do go home, you can still get your workout in with the same effects and efficiency as you would if you had the entire gym to yourself, okay? So that's 
my method. That's my style of teaching. Yeah, so whatever platform that I put this on, if you have any questions so far, please let me know. I know I'm like 40 minutes into the video, but depending how this is edited, whatever the case, um, I want you guys to let me know. Talk to me. Send me messages. Send me comments. And I'm hoping that I'm speaking to you in a way that's relatable, in a way that makes you feel comfortable um, to, to let me know or to let any of the coaches know because I believe the way that source healing is set up is you'll speak to coach Alma first and um, based off of your needs she's going to direct you to the person that she feels is most fit to to support you in your journey okay so I'm really hoping that I do make a connection with you guys so my job is to develop and improve your level of self-efficacy by giving you challenging situations in which you're trying to achieve your goal. So self-efficacy is a belief in your capabilities to successfully engage in physical activity in the program and nutrition. Do you believe that you can successfully achieve these goals? So like I said, I can motivate you all day. I can tell you to be disciplined all day. I can go to your house and knock out every little dirty little thing you got in there that you're not supposed to have. And as soon as I leave, you can take your butt to McDonald's. I can tell you not to eat McDonald's. And then on the day of our session, I can say, well, what did you eat before you got here? And you tell me a freaking egg McMuffin. I have nothing to do with that. There's only so much that I can do to keep you from these things. It's not like I'm living in your house or whatever the case, because we try to keep things where it's, it's affordable. So if I'm an in-house trader for you, you know, you got to pay for my living too. That's just what it is. And nobody wants to do that. So do you believe in your ability to successfully, to successfully complete these goals? That's what self-efficacy is. That's what it's about. Okay. It has a lot to do with the thought pattern and the emotional responses and your behavior. You know that saying where you have to like dot your I's and cross your T's? You know exactly who you are. You know the things that trigger you before you are triggered. You know the things that like, so if you... If you're one of those people, this is another thing that I hear from clients as well. They have close relationships with their parents, their spouses, or whatever the case. Maybe they're the only ones on this fitness journey, and they feel a way about it. They feel like they're being left out of the loop, that they're not able to engage in things that they love with their loved ones, and they had a good workout, and they know that they need to eat something of nutritious value after they leave and what they do is they go to their granny's house they go to their mama's house knowing that they're making smothered pork chops collard greens with the bacon in it or some cabbage with the bacon in it some cornbread mac and cheese like they know they're about to get the works and instead of telling their mom or their granny, no, thank you. That's not what I'm eating. Do you have anything else fresher? Or, you know, can I get the smothered pork chops with a fresh salad on the side? Or even bring your own fruits and salads and stuff like that. So that way you're not taking in all that goodness and, and feeling like I'm left out. I'm going to eat it. I don't want to disrespect. No, no, don't set yourself up for failure. And so in terms of how you respond to things, you're going to have to set yourself up for success. Do not set yourself up for failure. Do you believe in yourself? That's a question you have to ask yourself. Can you believe in yourself and maintain a positive attitude about it? And then let's say that you do. Let's say that you break down You've been training hard for the last three weeks and you're like, I got to have a pizza. I got to have it. And you take your butt to the store, to the restaurant, and you go get you a pizza and you ate the whole entire box staying there. That's okay. How are you going to respond to this? Are you going to sit there and sulk and feel bad? No, you're not. What you're going to do is say, I did that. And I, I have another day to start fresh. I have... 
another minute after this. I have another hour after this to make better decisions. So that way I stay on track, right? So we eat that pizza the next day or the next few hours. We're going to clean it up with some water. We're going to drink some water. We're going to flush it out. We're going to drink some water with some lemon. Make sure that we get it all out of our system. We're going to go to the gym the next day without feeling bad about it, without talking down to ourselves about it. We're not going to sit here and say, oh, I ate this pizza. You ate some food. You fueled yourself with this. Now, whether or not it gave you top tier energy or bottom of the totem pole energy, doesn't even matter. You're going to feel the effects of it during your workout. And then you're going to be reminded again that that's not what you want to do. That's not how you want to feel during this moment, right? So behavior changes, positive attitude, how you respond to these things. Communication is key. You need to communicate with yourself, your trainer, and you should be able to identify when you're hurt, when you're fatigued, when you're feeling emotionally drained, when you're feeling like I'm having these cravings, what can I do to offset these cravings? Ask yourself that. Ask your trainer. Your trainer should have, you know, a, a, a list of things or some solutions, recipes that they can send you. You even have this wonderful technology sitting in front of you most of us have computers and phones and things that can access the internet like this we can go to the library we can go to the grocery store we still have magazines that have recipes and I love the magazines in the store with the recipes you can go to the half price bookstore if you're in Houston and go get you some cooking magazines for a dollar literally when I first started um, trying to navigate my way through my nutrition. Um, I believe I bought a laptop and luckily the laptop came with like this little section of like cookbook stuff or whatever the case. And I looked up vegetable side dishes. My main focus were how do I make the vegetables taste better without it just being vegetables on a plate? How can I saute it? How can I cook it? How can I make it into a soup? How can I make it into a stew? How can I incorporate it with this chicken or with whatever I'm eating with these beans? How can I make it flavorful? How can I make it enjoyable for myself? So communication is key. You got to be honest with yourself. Don't hold back. Don't, <laughs> don't come into the sessions not explaining what is here and what is here especially if it's going to affect your workout and it's going to affect your progress with your nutrition so another point is preparation for relapse i kind of touched on this already dotting your eyes crossing your t's so you want to prep yourself for when you hit those plateaus when you're starting to feel like I want what I want. I want some feel good. I want comfort food or whatever the case. Okay. Be honest with yourself. Um, it takes certain levels of assertiveness to be honest and strength to be honest. And you have to have the confidence and be able to self monitor and regulate when you are prepping yourself for success when you're prepping yourself for a relapse how to remain active during these times or situations so let's say that you're worn out from the week like you're drained from work but you've been going hard for the last month and a half making sure you get to the gym and you just don't want to go to the gym so maybe you go home but you don't just sit still you're going to dedicate 5, 10, 15 minutes to a stretch session. You may go on YouTube and go find a video where you can do some yoga. You may ask your trainer, is there something else that I can do today because I'm like, my knees are aching. This is, this is not right. I just need a reset. They should send you something willingly, happily. Okay. Go for a walk, a brisk walk, ease your mind. Like walks do so much for the mind, for the spirit that I think that a lot of people kind of 
downgrade. They did, they don't even take it into consideration how much a walk can do for you. Identify any of the barriers that will keep you from performing successfully. Uh, identify the things that make you lack consistency. If it's going to be, you know, another one, especially in Houston, is it's hot. It's hot outside. It's hot in general. Nobody really wants to work out when it's hot. You're drained when it's hot. How do you offset living in humid, hot temperatures? How? Prepare yourself. Bring some cold water. Have some ice. Go get you a smoothie. Cool yourself down. Sit in the car with some AC. Do you have the social support? That's another way that you can navigate um, inconsistency. Like maybe, maybe you know, okay, I've been doing this strong by myself for the last six weeks. If you know somebody in your family or whatever the case, or even if you don't know anybody, it never hurts to ask. Like, do you want to come to the gym with me? I need a little extra motivation. Maybe you can send some love and motivation to them. Like you never know how you can help other people from asking them for help, especially in the fitness community. Like a social network does wonders. And the beautiful thing is you don't even have to have family or people in your immediate circle to support you. Because if you're in a gym environment, if you're going to those environments where you see other people working out, nine times out of 10, you're going to see the same people consistently. And you can make friends with them. You can talk to them. You have to not be afraid. And that's where confidence comes in. Like, let people know what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to get done and they'll share their goals with you right and and maybe you guys can become partners set yourself up for success so goal setting um you want your goals to be specific you want them to be measurable you want them to be attainable you want them to be relevant and time specific you want them to be something that can be achieved within a certain time frame and we've learned this like in elementary school setting short-term goals midterm goals long-term goals and I find that it helps when people set multiple short-term goals so maybe set a goal for especially if you're first starting out set a monthly goal and then a two-month goal and it's okay to just do that throughout your lifetime. Every month, you got a new goal. Every week, you got a new goal. Every day, you have a new goal. Every session, you have a new goal. And make it achievable. Make it attainable. You don't want to set too many goals at once. You want to set goals like today, yesterday, I went to the gym and I deadlift 20 pounds. I think I can do 35. I'm going to strive to get four reps in with a 35 straight bar barbell, a 35 pound straight bar barbell. I'm going to complete my strength training session and comp and and uh, in my strength training session with five minutes on the treadmill at a speed of four on an incline of three for five minutes, something like that. And record the process. Take pictures along the way to show the changes that you've made. Take note of how you feel each time you eat a new thing or try something new, try a new exercise, try a different level of intensity revisit your goals regularly so don't just set them and say okay i did it already and and that's done after a few months of completing all of these new goals maybe go back to the first one and and say okay let's see how many i can do now if you're saying that i i did for my first my very first first month's goal was to walk on the treadmill run on the treadmill at a speed of four and uh, incline to three for five minutes. This time, 
I'm going to go for 30 minutes, you know, after some months of training or whatever the case, like always be willing to challenge yourself, revisit your goals. Okay. So psychological factors related to behavior. My job is to identify how I can help individuals adopt and maintain an active lifestyle. And so we know life be life. There's always going to be something. So you need to be aware of yourself and how you're feeling. There's times where maybe I'm in a depressive state and I really don't want to do anything. But I know that moving my body, getting the blood flowing is going to make me feel better. Not only that, but you take a wonderful shower, you take a wonderful bath, you ease your mind, you relax, you reset, you're recentered, and you get a great night's sleep. And that can make all of the difference. Even if it's an ongoing depressive state for a few days, you know that moving your body will help with those happy hormones the oxytocin in your in your body and make you feel better and get you back to that recentered balanced state and that's what this is all about it's about rebalancing it's about a fit mindset what does it mean to have a fit mindset what does it mean to have a healthier mindset towards your fitness journey your overall well-being and how to incorporate this into your life as a lifestyle tracking behavior by stages of change so as a personal trainer learning how to identify where our most times a prospective client is like in their journey like are you in that pre-contemplation phase are you in the contemplation phase are you in the preparation phase are you in the action phase in the maintenance phase you should be able to also identify where you are. Pre-contemplation, you're just thinking about it. Like, I've been thinking about getting a gym membership. I've been thinking about eating healthy or whatever the case. The contemplation stage is you getting to that point where you're done complaining. You're done thinking about it. You probably went and got the, the gym membership, but you haven't gone yet. The preparation phase is... Okay, now I'm starting to to get my gear together. Like I'm starting to find outfits and things that I can wear to the gym. I'm starting to um, eat the things that I know that I'm not going to be able to eat till I get rid of them. Or I'm starting to throw these things out or whatever the case. I'm starting to tell my family members that this is about to happen and what I'm no longer going to do or accept or whatever the case. You In your action phase, you have at this point maintained a regular participation in going to the gym and eating healthy and not allowing anybody to hiccup you in your journey, especially with the nutrition, right? And then you get phase five of maintenance. At this point, you're going full blown, you're going hard and there's nothing that can stop you except for you. And so once again, revisit, prepare for the relapse, dotting your I's, crossing your T's, setting yourself up for success. That is all in maintenance. Not everybody, I don't care how strong, tough, and rough you are. There are some people who have like top tier, strong levels of discipline where it doesn't matter what they're going through. They're going to get their um, training in or they're going to eat a certain type of way. But not everybody's like that. And so you need to prepare yourself for when you're feeling a little down. And you don't have to look at these things as a good and bad thing. It is what it is. And we hop back on the bandwagon. And as long as we are hopping back into place, back into our routine, that is success. This one was a long um this one was a long section just because I really wanted to reiterate the importance of a healthy mindset and how it's up to you like i said i dedicated myself to becoming a trainer and to incorporating healthier things into my lifestyle because my grandmother passed away from complications of diabetes something that was completely preventable and had i known what i know now I could have helped her. And that's all I constantly think about. 
my family, they know who I am, what I'm about, what I do, what I'm, I'm passionate about. I go home and they say, oh, Kita, you're the healthiest one in the family. Yes. And every time I go home, I encourage them to try new things. If I'm cooking dinner, there's veggies with this dinner. There's fresh veggies. I've cut it up. Don't worry about it. I got you, boo. Do you want to help me? I can show you how to make this. Oh, you like that? I can show you how to make this. I can send you a recipe. Oh, those cookies were good. They had sweet potato in them. Make it a lifestyle. Make it make it known that this is what you, you're doing. This is who you are. This is what I'm about. And do it confidently. Everything has consequences. And there's a consequence that comes with eating burgers every day. There's a consequence that comes with working out every day. Not all consequences are bad. It's just a matter of cause and effect. And you know what you need to do for yourself. At some point in time, we are going to get into nutrition. And like I said, I like to teach a more intuitive way of eating. However, I understand that there are people out there who need more stricter like guidelines in order for them to get into the routine and the habit however intuitive eating can still provide you with that structure because you know what you need for yourself like a part of having a healthy mindset is once again believing in yourself having the confidence that you will be able to successfully achieve your goals and you know if you don't know you find out you learn, you figure it out. We got nutritional facts on the back of pretty much everything that we buy in the grocery store. You should be able to say, I want to know what this is. Look it up and see saturated fats versus unsaturated fats. What things have healthy fats in them? What doesn't have healthy fats? What oil should I be using versus the oil that I shouldn't be using? You got to be able to Find a process that works for you to reinforce um, what you've learned. Everybody hits plateaus. Everybody has to revamp, reshape, recenter. And there's going to come a time in your fitness journey where you feel like, I'm not getting the results anymore. What can I do? And that's when you ask for help. That's when you seek professionals that can help you elevate or you start trying different things like when it comes down to nutrition if you've been eating intuitively and and you know you've been eating like six meals a day and now you want to cut back and lose a little more weight or whatever the case whatever your goal is you know okay maybe I don't need six meals anymore maybe I can go down to four or maybe Instead of having the six meals with carbs in each one, I'm going to take carbs out of two of the meals and see what that does for me for a while. Play with it. Enjoy it. Enjoy the experience. Enjoy the process. <laughs> in conclusion, being active and non-active is a habit. Create the habit of being active. Eliminate the habits that don't serve your purpose or your goal and replace them with habits that help you feel successful in the goals that you've created for yourself. What do you want to do? How do you see yourself living? How do you see yourself feeling? How do you see yourself giving to the world? Identify the time wasting behaviors that can be replaced with more healthy and productive behaviors. As a lifestyle change, you will experience different phases as you go. Making the adjustments will increase the likelihood of these healthy behaviors. You know you have to drive 30 minutes from home to work. Find a gym near your work. Bring the clothes that you need for the gym in the car. Pack a lunch to avoid eating out. Pack some light snacks. If you know that all that's near your job is it's the fast food chain. You Let's say you forget your lunch. You end up at the fast food chain. You want to pick the healthiest option that you can from that chain. Even McDonald's has salads. Okay? Even McDonald's has sliced apples. Even McDonald's has oatmeal. 
So keep this in mind. Surround yourself with people who have similar goals. And these are all cognitive behavioral techniques that you can apply to your life to influence that change. Use these tools to identify problematic beliefs that are barriers to this change. Challenge yourself. Really think about it. Think about the belief systems that you have. Are they holding you back from achieving your goals, from being the healthiest you? Think about the people that you have around you that you see suffering from health conditions that are preventable. If that change, if they can change their life from you changing your life, from you changing your mindset, your, your behavioral patterns, how beneficial you could be to another person's life. Set these goals, give yourself grace, make the decision, and self-monitor these behaviors, okay? All right, so these are the things that I thought about when I said, what is a fit mindset? What is required to have a fit mindset? You can also be that girl that you see on your Instagram going to the gym. You cannot get better at something if you just don't start. You got to start from somewhere. So don't just take this and say, you know, I hear what you're saying, but really challenge yourself to eliminate these barriers of disbelief in yourself and say, I can do it. Even if I have to ask for help, I can do it. Even if you have to ask for help from multiple people. You can do it and you can achieve your goals. So speaking of goals, the homework that I have assigned um, a while ago, maybe a couple of years ago when I first got on YouTube and I started working with online clients, I decided to run a challenge with them and I called it Challenge That Habit perfect right challenge that habit so your homework your goal for this week is I want you to write down a list of habits that are known to hinder your progress and I want you to replace them with what you view as positive and more productive habits or behaviors okay Write down your external and internal reasons to embark on this fitness journey. So when I say your external reasons, you can go ahead and list, I want to look good. I want stronger biceps. I want abs. I want a bigger booty or whatever the case. And then you list your internal ones. You want to feel better. You want to look better. You want your skin to clear up. You want to heal yourself from diabetes or you want to improve these things you want to improve your arthritis or um, improve the health of your hair all of these things internal external reasons to embark on this fitness journey then i want you to identify what motivates you and it could be a repeat of what these internal external reasons are or whatever the case what motivates you do you have children you want to live for do you have grandchildren you want to live for do you just want to simply be able to get up and down from your seat without hurting your knees or straining and then list the things that if you have embarked on this journey before what made you quit what made you get to this point where you had to start over what stopped you from starting if you thought about starting let's say you were in that pre-contemplation phase and you just thought about it thought about it thought about it and never started it list the things that kept you from starting i encourage you to to sit with yourself and ask yourself those hard questions of what your motivations are, what your barriers are, and 
how you see yourself achieving these goals. All right. So thank you. Um, if you sat through and listened to this podcast, like I said, this is the first one and I hope I wasn't too much of a bore or (laughs) repeating things. Once we get this edited, hopefully we can do it in a way that keeps your attention. Um, I hope that you stick around throughout these six weeks and watch me grow and get better. And I hope to hear from you guys, um, whoever is assigned to me or whoever just runs across this video, this podcast, and you guys express how much you've changed and I want to see the changes that you've made. This is an important one. This is, like I said, the first step in building that strong foundation to a healthier fit lifestyle. Not for the moment. And so signing off, this is your girl Kita. Um, with Tight Grip Fitness and Source Healing with Coach Alma Ruth. And much love to you and your journey. If you have any questions, please be sure to ask. And you can also find me on Instagram at Tight Grip underscore fit. I do have a TikTok. I have it as TGF underscore Kita. And you can also find me on YouTube. I do have a few videos there at Tight Grip Fitness. Thank you. Bye-bye.